I'm delighted to say we can speak to Brian Nash, better known as Nasher, who is a guitarist behind some of those iconic hits, joins us now. Morning to you, Brian. Good morning, Good morning Charlie. Good morning, Naga. How Hi, are yeah. you? Yeah, look, lovely to see you. Do you know what I was thinking? As I was watching back through, and I remember those videos when they came out and those tunes, but I, I mentioned the videos primarily because sometimes people now forget that how the visuals then at that time, MTV was launching, wasn't it? And, and people were watching things and the creativeness that went around those films. They really did make an impact. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of a lot of people made a lot of money making those videos too. There were there was a, there was, you know, the bigger the band, it seemed to be the bigger the budget, and I guess that applied to us as well. You know, the difference between uh, the first relax video, I think, and the, and the two tries video was um, was a good, let's say, substantial, and I think it shows as well. Yeah, the two tribes you mentioned there was, I think, the last one we saw in that little uh, clip together, which was Reagan and Gorbachev, wasn't it? In, the, in a kind of in a boxing ring scenario. But, you know, even now, I've got that, you know, that vision in my head from the time. It's an amazing film. Well, I, I think it's, a, you know, the, we, we tend to forget that there was a lot of weapons in the world. And, and uh, whilst we, you know, you'd have been about the same age as me, Charlie, we would... Uh, we were there out enjoying ourselves, but there was that threat of uh, of nuclear Armageddon, if you like, just round the corner. We were just hoping um, we could get a few parties in before it happened. I think. That is so do that is you know that is absolute. I, I'm entirely endorse that because there what there was that sensibility at the time. Yeah, I, it's um, it, it's kind of easy to forget um, that it was a kind of real threat and. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the saddest thing is that we look around the world now and we've got even more weapons to destroy this planet many times over. And um, I don't think anyone's ever going to press the button because, you know, like like me and yourself, we're at young men. They want to have a few more parties too. Always good to part. Hey, you know what? We had Jim Broadbent on, the actor, just a few minutes ago. I, I was don't just know if listening you... to him. Were yeah. you? Isn't he amazing? Um, we were just talking to him and he had his birthday on Monday. Was it your birthday last week? Yes, I was. Uh, I'm 58. I'm 58 now. Happy and birthday! I'm, How uh, was it? Um, I spent it in, uh, watching a live band. You know, we've all been missing those kind of things. And uh, I went to uh, a mates bar in Liverpool and seen one of my favourite bands play. So it was fantastic. And uh, that's what I was doing last night. So I was. I didn't get in till about 2:30, and I'm a little bit hoarse this morning. I tell but, you what. Uh, you know what. I all, that shows, it for the world. <laughs> all that shows is that you are a true professional. You have got up, you got in at 2.30, you're, living, you're, you're <laughs> living up to, you know, the expectation that it's all rock and roll, yet you are a professional, you came in and you're still being perky. How are you feeling this morning, Mel? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. I'm go I, have to, I, I, have to be, uh, I have to be a little bit reserved because I've got <laughs> this, uh, the launch of the exhibition today and I've got to play, I've got to talk for an hour and play a couple of tunes, uh, play a couple of Frank... Uh, couple of Frankie tunes, I think, on the you day. Know, so the, um, These um, jumpers, we're just taking a look at the jumpers. You know, Frankie says, relax, Frankie says, relax, don't do it. They're all, they're iconic now. And you often see, I see, younger people, you know, with relax or, you know, the, the, the slogans. And I also, I also think, but did you know, do you really know what that means? It, it's amazing how the longevity of that now, does that ever surprise you? Because this exhibition, yeah, of course, traditional older fans, you know, fans from first time around were coming around, but... There will be new fans as well. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm guessing like a lot of these things that there'll be visitors to Liverpool with uh, with parents who will be my age and who experienced that the first time round, and they'll be with children who uh, they subjected to uh, their music tastes while they were driving them to school. So there may be new fans like that. Um, it's just surprising that you know all this time. And in it, and people are still talking about it. Um, on, on the pleasure dome sleeve, there was a quote uh, from myself saying that you know, if it all ends tomorrow, at least we've become part of people's memories and people's lives. And that happens, you know, it still happens that I get emails from people and people contact you, and you meet people, and they go, "Wow!" And people have fond memories of it. So it's. Um, Oh, it's great. It's great that it's being celebrated in this way. I'm being celebrated in such an iconic building in Liverpool, the Cunard building, which is uh, it's such an amazing space, being, you know, right on the waterfront, part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
So it's uh, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I haven't actually been into the building since about just after Christmas, so I haven't seen it finished. I've deliberately stayed away from it, so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what they've got there. Brian, there's no escaping that that uh, one of the reasons Frank goes to Hollywood is is worth celebrating. Quite apart from the music and the visuals, or whatever. I mean, Holly Johnson and that moment in time when he contracted HIV, and uh, it, it, that for a lot of people at the time, he, he was probably one of one of the only people they knew who had HIV, and it, it was like a story that played out through him. Yeah. I, um... Again, it's it's so easy to forget how uh, those people who who were HIV positive and and suffering from AIDS were absolutely stigmatised during that time. You know, there was a, the recent drama on TV. It's a sin. I think it was on Channel Four, and because it was of of my era, I was tempted to watch it. But then I kind of got the flavour of it and reading bits of reviews about it, and I didn't really want to put myself through that, watching it and seeing how those people were treated. I mean, if you look at the original Relax video, I think the first time you see me in the video, I'm sitting at a bar with half a dozen other guys who were all extras that were recruited from some of London's iconic gay bars and clubs, and none of those guys are still with us. And, um, you know, we, we've had the recently with uh, COVID and how that's affected the whole world. But, you know, to, for the for the, the gay population uh, back in the 80s, that was their plague, and it was, and it killed, it killed many. And it, it's one thing I'll always, uh, I'll always praise Diana for, was, you know, the handshake and meeting people mm. and showing them that there was nothing to be afraid of, you know. It was... Um, yeah, there's still people that won't have it. And, yeah. you know, we... we well, we all tend to forget that. You Do you know, know what, Brian? It, was a it, long time it is, as you say, it really is an important part of, of your your personal story and the Frank goes to Hollywood story. Uh, lovely talking to you today. Really interesting hearing those thoughts. And good luck with the exhibition. And I hope you feel better if you're feeling a bit. Oh rough. no, I'm sorry. I'm top. I'm top good. of the morning. Good, good, I'm good. Top good. Of the morning. Nice to see you. Nice, lovely well. to speak to you. Thank see you. you. Um, the Frankie Say 1984 exhibition opens at the British Music.